Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're at out here. It is the Earth Master back on the live stream with an update video here on this Saturday, December 2nd, 2023. It is about 1126 a.m. California time here. And uh, did have some large earthquake movement overnight uh, in the Philippines area. I did call to watch this region right here in the Western Pacific areas. And in this case, a little adjacent plate here uh, for some further movement. Watch my last couple videos here. We kind of chatted about this. They've seen a large 7 point, uh, looks like they're staying at a 7.6, right? See what the USGS is reporting here. There's just been a lot of earthquakes here in this region. And uh, let's see, a 7.6 coming in earlier this morning into the Philippines region. This thing did trigger a tsunami warning and a slight uh, elevated tsunami activity event across several buoys out here in the western pacific all these were sent into event mode now there's not a huge water column height they're just merely uh, just micro uh, amounts there but it did trigger a little bit uh, of stations out here to go into event mode uh, the 7.6 now is the uh, i believe the third largest earthquake so far this year kind of ties for the uh a couple other 7.6s that uh, came up earlier uh, throughout the year but uh, that's pretty darn large earthquake out here for sure so let's take a look at this and see what uh see what's going on obviously it is in a zone that sees quite a bit of earthquake activity out here historically that's uh that's an understatement i believe that is around the Philippine Trench here, but a relatively shallow earthquake about 32 kilometers deep here into this region of the Philippines Trench. And uh, so far, uh, let's see here, we've had about, uh, I know it looks like some huge earthquake swarm out here for sure, but about 30 earthquakes total, including the 7.6. Uh, quite a few sixes in there, quite a few fives, uh, some mid sixes as well not uh i don't think we're going to see anything bigger than this but there's always a likelihood potentially of seeing uh, a secondary quake in and around the region here of similar magnitude to what we've seen earlier this morning with that 7.6 coming in uh, so just a heads up let's see if uh the usgs uh, usgs put a little tectonic summary out today just going to touch up on a couple wording a uh, little bit of wording out here uh, it, it occurred out here as a result of oblique reverse faulting at shallow depth there, about uh, 75 kilometers west of the Philippine Trench. Uh, focal mechanism solutions indicate that the rupture occurred as a result of shallow reverse faulting consistent with the subduction interface fault. So this area does see quite a bit of large earthquake activity. It looks at, like uh, about 103 mm per year. That's some significant uh, accumulation there in slip rate, um, in that slip rate range. Uh, earthquakes of this size are typically, uh, let's see, what do we got? Something about width and length here. At many of these subduction zone boundaries, the uh, Philippines frequently experience moderate to large earthquakes. 127 additional earthquakes of M6 or larger have occurred. Over the past 100 years, within about 250 kilometers of this uh, earthquake. So I did show you that uh, earthquake history. So very active. Um, and we had noticed here, we have noticed uh, some quieter conditions prevailing. They were prevailing out here across areas of the Western Pacific. Huge clustering going on out here across the Indonesia Islands area. Uh, but... It, everything looked a little odd here in the last couple days. It looked like something wanted to move out here. I said to watch this area of the Western Pacific. In this case, uh, it's just the adjacent plate down here. Uh, and that area does tend to get strained by the Pacific in a northwestward fashion here. That's the movement of the north of the uh, Pacific plate. Uh, but also we got areas up here kind of putting strain and, and the crunch in this region. Uh, but still, I think they're... Uh, uh, there may be some similar magnitudes out there, so just keep uh, keep your eyes peeled on that. 
Um, far as the tsunami warning center there, right now it looks like there is no tsunami warning advisory watch or threat. This was a few hours ago uh, that came in. And originally it looks like it came in as a 7.7 .7 that did trigger a tsunami statement here from the tsunami.gov website. Uh, and they put out a wording here that uh, based on the earthquake parameters, hazardous tsunami waves are possible for coasts located within a thousand kilometers of the earthquake epicenter but that has passed and the latest information statement here states that based on all available data the tsunami threat from this earthquake has passed but it did trigger like i say a couple of these buoys out here in event mode obviously if there was going to be a huge tsunami we probably would have seen it by now and it would have showed up here on these graphs yes there was a little bit of water column height uh, adjustment uh, but not a big one at all. Again, these would have shown dramatic increases in uh, or decreases in water column height uh, if there was a huge wave coming. So that is done for now. Um, and I said here that we were kind of waiting for some movement out here to see some relief for the California area. Over the past couple days when this region has been awfully quiet, um, we were watching areas across the eastern Pacific really ramp up, and that included California. Uh, so I think potentially we should see things die down slightly here across the west coast. That includes California. Uh, we did see a lot of deep, deep, deep earthquake activity here into the Tonga Trench. Oh, when was it? Let me pull up the last seven days here. I think it was about two days ago or so. Some yesterday... Well, no, it's, yeah, it's been about two days or so ago. We've seen a lot of deep activity. When that happens, we we got to look at areas to the west here along this plate boundary. And um, that's where all the strain tends to build up when we see this deep movement quake activity there in the Fiji region. And there was a lot. There was definitely some, some earthquake activity uh, below the 600 kilometer mark there. So uh, definitely looks like that uh, area was a prime region here for some uh, some huge stress now the last earthquake that struck out here in this region I'm trying to think let me pull up this other map and see what we got look at these uh these are all sixes coming in today that's crazy i pulled up 6.0 and above this year it looks as though let's see it was 12 to about 10 o'clock. Doesn't look like we've seen too much earthquake activity so far this year within, within this region. It looks like there was one maybe, but it's got a, uh, uh, a delete type event here on this earthquake, that 6.0 that struck maybe back in February. But yeah, this has been uh, quiet in terms of large scale potential. Either way, definitely some large earthquake activity. One region that really hasn't seen any filling in either. Uh, remember that Izu Trench, we are seeing a lot of earthquake activity here earlier, a couple months ago in this region. That has the potential, I believe, to, to I guess all the activity was upstream though, kind of uh, at the surface levels, really not a whole lot of deep activity here. Um, I'm wondering if this region right here, south, of Tokyo along this plate boundary may be a little bit strained as well. Uh, but I think the big player may be this mega quake potential up here in the Kuril Kamachaka. That is absent in, in terms of large-scale movement, and that has um, been accumulating some stress for a little while. That, that, I believe, we could see some mega quake possibility taking place there soon. But for now, we'll continue to watch um, this area uh, for some some aftershock activity, which could continue here for a couple days or a couple weeks, but the longer this goes on here, in terms of uh, you know maybe not seeing a large earthquake, uh, the less likely it will be. But I think we need to watch these next 24 hours for some potentially uh, larger aftershock activity as well within this region. Uh, if you are out there around the Philippines and you felt it, let me know what what it felt like. It was probably a uh, with a subduction zone interface is probably a uh, rolling type motion but uh, let me know if you're out there 
Let's look at California here. See if we got any relief out here. This whole area, California, uh, quite a few adjacent plates out here east uh, of the uh, Pacific plate has been active. But I think, like I say, this should calm down now uh, that we've seen some of that larger scale movement out west. So let's take a look and see what we got uh, for Southern California. It had been rocking and rolling out here with quite a few threes recently. Uh, the last earthquake here, a couple ones in the last hour or so, or last couple hours. Those are all very small microquakes. Anything noteworthy uh, overnight? It doesn't look like it. Maybe it looks like the 2.1 is going to be the largest about 7 o'clock this morning or so. But we'll watch this throughout the day. Uh, see if uh, the West Coast out here gets some relief due to the plate adjustment taking place out here, obviously. Potentially. I mean, the, the Philippines area here, not on the Pacific plate. They're on their own separate plate over here uh, with a Filipino plate. But it does play a part on the stress uh, amongst these plates in general. And that includes the western areas of the Pacific plate. So we'll see if it uh, quiets down or not. Uh, the rest of California. Let's see what we got. A couple earthquakes up here from last night. 3.3. Ferndale, that's way out there. Well, Ferndale's over here, but uh, this earthquake is way out here in the Gorda Escarpment area. Uh, the rest of the states, minor earthquake activity out here. Puerto Rico Trench is a region we've been watching pretty closely as well. Kind of curious to see if this will slow down or not. Uh, we've been getting a lot of earthquake activity here around St. John's. This is a major subduction zone, very capable of producing a similar magnitude earthquake that we've seen uh, there in the Philippines in this area so uh, very possible but it looks as though maybe things may calm down here as well or last earthquake uh, looks like about 10 o'clock this morning for a 3.8 but this region around St. John's here that was really kicking up uh, just after midnight or so we did see another 5.2 in that region so I like to see what happens to these plates following a large-scale adjustment could be relief out here across the west coast the next question is uh, where is the potential momentum and strain going to accumulate uh, in this case right here uh, with that adjustment taking place that that furthers the philippine plate uh, to the west here i believe so that could obviously increase regions up north uh, north here of the philippines taiwan region I'll definitely watch this today and see how it behaves. Uh, so yeah, for a real quick recap, we've got, uh, make sure I got, yeah, this is all magnitudes, but I'm sure there's a lot more. As you can see here on the globe, a lot of this is uh, being reported by the EMSC as well. USGS going to report um, roughly, I think it's about 4.0 and above, if that. Uh, but we may see uh, some other earthquake activity in here throughout the day. Either way, that's a <laughs> that's a lot more active than what I've seen here in the past uh, few weeks or so. And all this activity comes following some space weather event, right? We did see uh, the auroras pretty strongly here over the past couple nights. Let me check that out real quick and see what we got for current conditions. I know they were dying down when I went to bed. Current conditions, pretty quiet. I know about... Uh, Oh, about 10 or 11 o'clock or so conditions out there started to calm back down to where they're at right now. These are pretty minimal conditions out here. But uh, over the past couple nights, we have seen uh, that G3 class storm and then uh, G2, G1 conditions here over the uh, over uh, last night. And a lot of people feel this is definitely uh, in terms of related to earthquake activity as well. Uh, the two may play a part in one another, and uh, I would say with this event, uh, these past couple days of uh, elevated space weather event, yes, there is a, a, a relation to the earthquake activity and space weather. If, if you really think about it, right, the effect here on the electromagnetic field uh, that the Earth harbors, a lot of pressure being applied there from space weather and, and charged particles could affect the plate boundaries. So I'm going to try to keep a total tally of or space weather events and the relation uh, to large earthquake activity and general earthquake uptick in general. 
We started to see, like I say, started to see uh, elevated activity in the uh, California region with that first event there a couple nights ago when the G3 class storm kicked up. All right, got a 5.4 coming in Philippines right now, it looks like, in the last 20 minutes. Again, I still think there's a potential of seeing some good size aftershock activity in here. We've already seen it, so just be on guard for more shaking. Now, I'm not for sure if these guys put out uh, an earthquake forecast. It's something the USGS has done for a little while. Um, let's see here. Where is our seven pointer? There it is. Let's see, sometimes they put out a little forecast, but it uh, doesn't look like it, at least on this one. So, but either way, definitely keep it, uh, be safe because there's definitely some more aftershock activity coming. All right, so looking at this area, let's see if we've had any adjustment yet taking place. Uh, this area up in the Bangladesh area was from yesterday. That's a 5.5, pretty a strong earthquake for that area. A um, couple earthquakes down here on the Java Trench about five o'clock this morning or so. That was from last night. So definitely uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, the potential of some migration following this uh, adjustment along the plate boundaries here. Obviously, when we get some large scale movement like that, it will affect uh, areas potentially nearby or thousands of miles away because that pressure uh, tends to transfer, so to speak, across either the plate boundary or uh, potentially other faults um, in and around this region. So we'll see how this goes today. Um, South Sandwich Trench did see a little earthquake last night. That was 5.0. See if we got anything major going on up in Iceland in terms of uh, earthquake activity. Got about uh, 45 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. 0.3 coming in right now. North of Grindavik around the Hagafell area. It's going to be this region right here. Still seeing some uh, elevated earthquake activity. As uh, far as the latest information statement here put out from the Icelandic Meteorological Office. This was put out yesterday here. So they mentioned that seismic activity is still decreasing, but there's still a potential eruption possible. This is not completely over yet. So just kind of watching this, seeing how this plays out. Quick glance here at Yellowstone National Park uh, up there in Wyoming. Super volcano. Uh, there is the, uh, man, goodness. There's the 7.6 signature, followed up by quite a few sixes. Showed up somewhat nicely here across the seismograph station there in Yellowstone. It was not felt in Yellowstone, but these uh, seismograph stations here are very sensitive in terms of ground movement and vibrations. So definitely pick that up. S-Wave showing up here on this uh, station as well. So expect more earthquakes, folks. Um, I don't know if I have a seismograph station in that area or not. I can probably add one uh, just to keep an eye on the uh, current activity here. This is about the closest one. See if this one works. Uh, it does. All right, sweet. So we'll keep one of these up here. I'm not going to keep all these Philippine stations up, but definitely showing that recent earthquake that's coming in right now. That's going to be a 5.4 showing up on this, uh, seismograph signature or on this, uh, seismograph, that beautiful signature. We'll be back, uh, throughout the day, folks. If something major happens, we'll definitely jump back in. Uh, till then we'll probably catch you guys a little bit later tonight. Stay safe out there and uh, be prepared for some more shaking. Have a good one.